In early 2004, reports started to circulate about the growing humanitarian crisis in Darfur, Sudan. A pattern of systematic, unlawful attacks on civilians carried out by the government-backed militia known as the Janjaweed forced 1.2 million people out of their homes. During the world's greatest humanitarian crisis, the women and girls of Darfur were falling victim to a vicious, invisible war. Amnesty International reported it was beyond doubt that the occurrence of rape and other sexual violence is widespread, and that the use of rape as a tactic of war was nothing short of a crime against humanity. The men perpetrating this violence did so with impunity and the full backing of the Sudanese government. They loot and rape and no one is allowed to touch them. Irish organisations called on world leaders to address the horror story unfolding in the Darfur province. But still, little was done to stop the war crimes from taking place. Women and girls were raped, abducted and used for sexual slavery. No women were safe. Pregnant women, young girls, the elderly, from 8 to 80, all women were under constant threat of brutal attack. Even those in the IDP camps were not safe. Without a strategy to keep women and girls safe, they would be raped by armed men on their way to collect firewood. While Irish organisations struggled to gain access to the most vulnerable in the IDP camps, Amnesty called for all those delivering aid to have robust measures to protect civilians against further violence, discrimination and stigmatisation. In April, Trokra called the international response a test of all we said about not letting Rwanda's tragedy happen again. We were not dealing with the inevitable, we were presented with a choice. Faced with this choice, a group of people from across Irish government and Irish-based international NGOs involved in the response in Darfur came together to start a conversation. There's a, a very real need for us to focus on this issue. The question was, what could we do to respond more comprehensively to the atrocity of rape against women and girls? I remember that very initial meeting because it was just a group of people coming together very informally. There was no agenda. It was very much around there is this massive crisis going on in Darfur. We're all trying to respond to it in our own way. We're either we're operational agencies on the ground or we're working with local partners on the ground or we are trying to advocate for more of an international response to this crisis or we're donors like the Irish government themselves being donors to this response and trying to help others um, at the EU level etc respond to this crisis and so we just were sharing our experiences at the time of this massive other issue of rape and what do we as agencies know about it and how to respond to it and how better to prevent it mm -hmm. and so the very early meetings were about we actually know nothing about this. Gender-based violence is not inevitable, yeah. Yeah. right? And that's where we start. We don't start from the fact it's terrible and we have, it's a problem. It is not inevitable and every step should come from there. 1325 was a major uh, piece of work that we'd taken on. We believed that Ireland was lacking something in that the National Action Plan was in vogue for a number of years. The UN, sorry, the UN resolution was in vogue for a number of years, but Ireland had not responded to it. The advocacy group and the practice and learning group really got involved in this and with Irish aid. And we all felt very strong that we actually needed a, an action plan. So we started working on that action plan around 2008 and we saw through with the Irish National Action Plan in 2011. The uh, consortium had a, a large group of uh, interesting uh, people involved and organisations. And as you say, there was both statutory and non-statutory. So by engaging with the women on the ground, that was always the power of the consortium. And I think that's where uh, Mary Robinson, when she challenged us every year at our annual event, CEO's event, when she challenged us there, that left the work to be done for the following year. Because she came back the following year and actually asked us, what did we do about it? So from that aspect of it, as an organisation, the consortium, it was an excellent organisation or during the years that I worked with it. And I have to say, long may it continue from that point of view.
we needed to educate ourselves. We needed to understand this issue. And so we embarked upon um, some research. We, we hired a consultant to look at just researching what is this phenomenon? Mm-hmm. Uh, what kind of um, strategies should be deployed by agencies like international agencies? Um, to to deal with it, how can we prevent it? Mm-hmm. How can we better program to address it in the case of inter- of refugees and IDPs? And so, the first year or two was very much an education process to to for all of us to understand that this is a worldwide phenomenon. It exists way further than just Darfur. That it it affects people not only in humanitarian crisis, but it affects people in in every country both north and south, but in developing settings as well, that it was something that we should be cognizant of. And if we were going to do development, as we were all about, um, or be better in humanitarian response, we needed to fully understand this issue and we needed to know how to address it and we needed the tools to do it. The core focus of the consortium from the very beginning was always about that we can do better work on the ground to prevent and respond to gender-based violence. we've taken an international standpoint we've actually attended the commission on the status of women in new york for the last um three years so we've been developing our own reputation within the the sector itself and we're hoping that what we've been doing will inspire others to kind of follow suit and to do similar things to what we're doing the vision of the consortium is very clear we want to see a world free from fear and free from violence against women and children